Hello everyone, today is a fragrance video and today we will be discussing two perfumes. One of them is going to be the um, namesake perfume from the Tory Burch line, Tory Burch, Tory Burch, and the second one is going to be Jimmy Choo Illicit. Uh, those are not new to the market. I rarely ever get my hands on something that is completely new because I normally have a backup log of fragrances that I'm supposed to be talking about. I have used these fragrances in a smaller format, a few minis and a deluxe. Um, that's giving me really enough time with them to understand the fragrance and to develop some kind of an opinion about it. So Tory Burch uh, scent is actually the one that was released in September of 2013. It's been a moment. It does come in a solid perfume um, pendant which I really like when the uh, brands release different types of applications, um, not just to have the other parfum and eau de toilette, but I really enjoy when they do a solid, uh, maybe um, an oil, maybe a gel, or a little lighter weight cologne kind of concentration. It's nice to cover the market a little bit. So the idea of introducing a solid perfume is really great and very convenient. For me, I was trying the original Eau de Parfum, so that's the one I will be talking about specifically. I was intrigued by the description because it does have a kind of a clean, uplifting, uh, cedar, vetiver, sandalwood combo kind of a base, which I enjoy. These are notes that are very easy to wear. Um, it does have citrus on the top, which I also was kind of excited about because I like freshness, um, I like summery scents, I was hoping maybe that's what's going to be there. I was intrigued about carrot seed um, note being listed, sweet alyssum note was listed. So I was really approaching the fragrance with an interested sort of side eye, try and see what it's all about because there's some interesting parts of it by the description that I was kind of excited about. In reality we have a pretty unisex approach to a scent and it is mostly citrus floral. Um, I don't actually feel much sandalwood in this particular scent. It does come out a little bit more as you wear the fragrance in. Most of what I'm smelling really is mandarins and some peony. Those are the most prominent notes here and ones that definitely uh, define the fragrance. Um, the part that I do like about this particular little uh, piece is that um, the mandarin Smells actually quite authentic, very authentically Mandarin. Normally, whenever they uh, start listing Mandarin orange versus blood orange, it all smells like lemons to me a lot of the time. So a lot of the time is just words. However, in this particular case, we do have a fairly distinguished little Mandarin. It does remind me of the kind of a citrus that is in Atelier Cologne, Clementine, California. Um, a similar kind of citrus, very pretty, uh, very uplifted, so that I really, really enjoyed about this particular scent. Vetiver, white musk and cedar really compose the base, which is undistinguished uh, vetiver white wood concoction, which is fine. This suits the scent quite well. And there's a question mark, some other fruitiness in here that is not listed in the notes but almost a bit of a sweet apple scent as well, which I find also quite pleasing. I do find the scent quite unisex. It's in the softer um, citrus side of citruses in general, but I wouldn't find it bizarre on a man. I wouldn't find it bizarre on a man anyway, but if you do subscribe to gender stereotyping fragrances, this would be fine for a male. It'd be okay, nobody's gonna ask you questions. The longevity is decent for a citrus. Uh, citruses are not very well known for their long-lasting power and tenacity, but uh, it's fine. For actually, for, for a citrus-based fragrance, I have no complaints, it's fine. Citruses don't last long, the citrus is uh, sort of medium longevity, I would give it maybe four to five hours, um, which is not bad for a citrus, really, really is not. Sillage is really low, which actually is a nice touch for an everyday uh, scent. If you're looking for sillage that really radiates around you, this is not going to be one that is going to be aggressive in any kind of way. It is a rather mild to moderate amount of projection, so very safe 
This is a really, really safe scent, I think, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I have to say it doesn't excite me very much. It doesn't turn me up. It doesn't make me really want to get a full bottle of it, but it is not unpleasant. There isn't anything in here that is synthetic or resembling some kind of a, um, a witch brew of something unnatural. No. Fairly natural, resembling a mandarin orange sort of fragrance with a sweet, very laid back peony base. So completely inoffensive, very safe pick if you're trying to buy for someone. So if you're looking to buy a fragrance for uh, a friend and you're not sure of what they like exactly, this would be one of those that um, I'm not, I don't think would be a challenge to integrate into whatever lifestyle, fragrance lifestyle you lead. It's not going to make you think, it's not going to be uh, a niche, interesting storytelling scent, it's not going to be uh, changing on your skin a whole lot, but it is going to be pleasant and polite. This is a polite scent. It does give me the vibes of Clinique Happy. So for the lovers of Clinique Happy, I think you would really enjoy Tory Burch of the Parfum. I think you would actually like it more than Happy. Um, Happy has a slight shrillness to it, a freesia shrillness that might not resonate for everyone. That shrillness is absolutely absent in the Tory Burch. So I think if you are someone who's worn a lot of Happy by Clinique and you feel like you're ready for something else but you don't want a complete departure, Tory Burch might be something that you actually like. For me, it is not a scent that I would be super excited to repurchase or purchase in a, in a large format but it was something that I didn't mind wearing and it was kind of pleasant, it was kind of nice. The pyramid also boasts some pink pepper, which I do not detect very much at all, but I do know people who that's all they can smell, so obviously, you know, trying your own skin to see what plays up, but for me, pink pepper is really, really mild here and very tolerable if you're not a fan of pink pepper shouldn't stop you from wearing the Tory Burch. If you have a young daughter who might be trying to get into fragrances and you want her to have something but not to have something very committal, again, Tory Burch would be good as well. Um, no complaints, really. I think quality-wise, this is fairly decent. Um, I don't find any major problems with the formulation. It smells very natural. Um, I can tell what exactly they were trying to do with the scent. It did not knock my socks off and it did not uh, make me gag. It, it, didn't, it didn't make me really want to go out and buy it. So uh, Tory Burch is actually a toss-up for me. I think it's a nice scent. It's not for me, but quality-wise it's getting my thumbs up. The second fragrance that I wanted to talk about today is Illicit by Jimmy Choo. This little guy I've been interested in for a long time and finally I got my hands on a bunch of samples uh, and uh, I especially like it when they come as a deluxe sample where it's like a mini format of the actual bottle. It's just cuter that way, but ultimately it really doesn't matter how you're trying out your fragrances. I was curious about that one. I've smelt it previously on um, uh, on blotters in store. Whenever we still were going to stores these days, I haven't, I haven't been in a store in such a long time. I haven't done groceries in a year. I have my husband go out and get groceries. I do not even remember when the last time was. Probably in April of last year. Oh my gosh. So Jimmy Choo was uh, a scent that I was coming across when I was in a very honey phase. I purchased a whole bunch of honey fragrances and uh, Jimmy Choo Illicit. I wanted to, to give it a go and see if it would be a suitable honey fragrance for my taste. It boasted of main notes of honey, being rather sweet, a little bit citrusy, so I thought great sweet, yet with sourness cutting through it, this might be a hit. It was released in 2015, so it is also aged a little bit, but, uh, and the nose behind it is absolutely cool. She's with the IF uh, agency, ISI PCA certified, or uh, I guess graduated. So uh, credentials are there for sure. She created upwards of one and a half hundred um, different scents, so a rather impressive, very productive perfumer, very productive nose. I think she did the uh, Burberry Brick Rhythm, the for him version. For Chloe or Chloe, she did the Fleur de Narcisse and a bunch of love story. I think the original and a few flankers of that line. 
within Chloe. She was the one behind the Coach fragrance, I believe the original of Befran as well. More uh, famously, she signed off on the Aqua de Gioia uh, for Armani and also Lindarzi for Givenchy. She did a whole bunch of Lindarzi uh, flankers also. So most of the for her line for the for this particular fragrance is by her. And she also works extensively with the Jo Malone line. So all this is to say she is a rather big deal. She is a rather well-formed, well-known, busy, productive nose. Um, so I was expecting really good things from the illicit. There is some ambery caramel, there's some honey that all is there for sure. The interesting part of this little concoction is ginger. If you're a lover of ginger, you will find it here actually. And um, ginger uh, juxtapositioning against a sweet base is actually kind of a cute little move. Very nice. There is lots of generic citruses there, but mostly the signature of this scent is really for me going to be um, honey plus caramel plus sweeties, then ginger, indistinguishable white florals. If I had to pick three main notes, which I usually do, I oftentimes say, okay, if I had to just narrow it down to really pinpoint what exactly we're smelling here, uh, it would be honey, ginger, and citrus, which is not, you know, too much of a cliche. So I was happy to find a bit of uniqueness here. Both the longevity and the sillage of this fragrance are actually rather good. I wouldn't say that they're freaky, freaky long or large, but they are reasonably impressive for the Eau de Parfum, about where I would expect an Eau de Parfum to settle. The honey is wearing off into the sweetness. It's not so much a waxy or pollen sort of honey. It's just processed, squeeze out of the bottle kind of honey, which is still delicious and smells very sugary. It doesn't really smell like any of my other honeyed uh, perfumes, especially honey florals. It does stay in its own little lane. So nothing too close to it that I have tried. Uh, I, well, that's out on the market. I'm sure it exists, but I haven't tried anything that's very close to it. So I was impressed by the fact that it does appear to be, to my nose at least, unique. Fairly unique. Now as to who would like it, I think anyone who wants an elevated sweet honey scent I would probably enjoy it quite a lot because it does have the ginger and the orange really cutting through the sweetness. It's rather more acceptable or I should say less suffocating when you have lots and lots of very sweet dense honey. That can become a little much, it can become a bit suffocating, but because you have the freshness from the ginger, you have the freshness from the citruses, it cuts right through that. I would probably, if I had to change something, I would probably do a little bit more ginger and a touch more, maybe pomelo or something like that. And then the scent would be a little bit more up my alley. For me, it's still, um, it's still too sugar dominant. Um, but there is a little bit of depth to it. There is a little bit of playfulness. And I overall am not mad at this fragrance. I feel kind of about the same way about this as I do about the Tory Burch. This is not for me personally. It's not a scent that I would go out and buy in a full size for myself. However, however, I am definitely, uh, definitely convinced that the quality of the ingredients is there. And certainly I wouldn't say it's poorly made. It's really not badly made. It's a nice little piece of designer level perfumery, so no complaints here either. I do like the way Illicit wears down. It does get a little bit more woody, a little bit more powdery, a little bit less uh, concentrated sugar, which I tend to enjoy because there, there tends to be more base to it as you wear into it. Um, the top notes are strong and powerful and they kind of overtake the scent, so after application maybe 30 minutes after application, maybe 45 minutes after application, that's when I really start to enjoy the scent. Again, I don't think I enjoy it enough to continue purchasing and to be getting a full size of it. However, I can definitely tell that there's a market 
for something like this. It's a rather feminine sweet honey scent, really. For someone who doesn't want to draw too far outside the lines, but does want maybe something with a little bit of a creativity put into it. I wouldn't call the scent very exciting. Again, if I was to make my own little tweaks and modifications, which I'm sure Anne would not be too excited about, I would probably go heavier on the ginger and add some kind of a sour fruit. And I think it would probably create a little bit more depth in the fragrance um, because they're the and also I'm not so sure that I would market it uh, with the name that it has uh, and the bottle that it has it is a light-hearted uh, smiley easygoing fragrance it's really not illicit illicit is something much more sinister much more sensual I would really not peg this guy as that if we are talking about who might be wearing these guys I would not hesitate to say it might be the same person um, the same person who's looking for something easy to wear something practical something that's available off the shelf uh, and uh, doesn't like to go too far outside the norm wants to have something that's basically is going to smell nice, is going to be enjoyed by most people, and is not going to create a lot of headaches, although illicit over apply can definitely be way too heavy. So I would say illicit, don't over apply, Tory Burch, go for it. But this is for, uh, for probably not a fragrance aficionado. If you are um, a lover of fragrances, if you have a lot, you won't be surprised or delighted by either of these. If you are a beginner and you want something easy um, and simple and rather wearable, easy to wear, not complicated, not too complicated, not too a uh, niche, I would recommend either one as a first scent for a fairly young lady. And really, just to keep it as an easygoing daily no fuss perfume, especially that uh, goes with Tory Burch, but also maybe in warmer weather with the illicit as well. Um, so, so I know it's a bit of a lukewarm review because some of these scents are so easily classifiable as meh, it's fine. Um, I tend to give a lot of fragrances this kind of a review. I like to be very clear about who I feel this would work best for and uh, whether the quality is actually even anything that you should uh, consider buying or not because poor quality is just a non-starter for me if it's a badly constructed fragrance or it smells plasticky, yucky, metallic, it has an aftertaste of any sort uh, that is unpleasant, that's also a non-starter for me. If you've tried either of these two, what are your experiences with them? Leave it down below. Let's talk about how we feel about these particular two little pieces of perfumery. Um, quite respectable. Again, I would say not for me. That's it for today. See you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones.